like Marvi Mazar. Marvi is an architect and heritage consultant based out of Karachi, Pakistan. After graduating from Indus Valley School of Art and Architecture, she pursued a master's degree in heritage management in Turin, Italy. Her work focuses on the changing footprint of Karachi's in inner city through archives and constant visual ethnography of Purana Sheher, Old Town, versus Naya Sheher, New and Reclaimed Town. Her most recent work is to understand the legalities of the public heritage properties, amenity plots, and urban parks of Karachi, and to understand the gated community from a social analytical perspective. Through her practice, she examines how the cities grow in an isolated architectural practice versus those in a mohalla, neighborhood-based design practice. Apart from leading her firm, Mazur currently serves on several government boards and actively participates in numerous city rehabilitation politics and urban interventions. Ladies and gentlemen, architect Marvi Mazur. Thank you so much. Um, I think the talk before this one, talking about the mid path, um, I will be talking about the activism, which should be part of the design uh, perspective to understand how cities are growing. So, I'm going to divide my presentation in two parts, going through my paper and then showing you visuals to make you understand where and why this is a very important element to uh, incorporate in our design thinking. So Karachi is projected to become the world's third most populated city by 2030. The cities we create depend on choices we make. I'm going to start the setting by saying, what is our imagery of cities? When we imagine cities, we often imagine it to be something like this. The second, of course, the myth is about the personal experience. It's the attitude we professionals know better. We professionals love to make choices for others, especially for the people. There are some issues that existing institutions simply can't address. For example, we try to incorporate researchers, nonprofits, publications around the world who are filling the gap. So the complicated notion comes in when we have an image like this, or a setting where we have to deal with the infrastructure. In developing countries, a lot of the architecture is focused on building new and leaving a trademark to show independent vision, neglecting the contextual analysis or creating a glass skyline for prosperity. A city is understood through its cultural heritage, significant especially in context of South Asia, where city struggles are class differences, economic disparity, and architectural projects. Uh, leading towards moderni modernity and regionality. Here, lack of politically engaged architectural projects and lack of socially responsible collectives for architectural design, counting development of worth living, are missing pieces. When, when will contingent of young architects begin to challenge the custom to instead orient their practice around what might be referred to as political object? City as dynamic as Karachi, more than six city centers with 15 million population, 21 without registration, 2.45% growth. One of the problems with architecture at the moment is that we're socially agnostic about it. We are not thinking about the lineage and the criteria of taking from the heritage and starting a, starting a collective of uh, a co combined understanding. Here, spatial activism who would operate like facilitators using design, not an end in itself, but as a mean to pursue a specific object or a vision in facilitating. My larger question is, how do we start facilitating? Creating social responsible experience outside of proposed objects or projects. When do we notice the height of the entry and exit of the public bus? we used by all genders and age brackets? When do we talk about grassroots change and bring activism within our design practice? Architivism maybe is a subject that needs a special focus. So this is a map of Karachi where um, the gray footprint is a, is a constructed area, the pink uh, is under construction and the urban green areas are the deep green. And, and the light green is the area which has not been touched, which is outside Karachi. So this is the notion right now, which you can see a ratio between the built environment and the open spaces. Now, architectural and urban development practices, cultural and artistic programming, which is a very important element where the artist and the architects come together and create a dialogue. 
All combined bring an unusual, unfamiliar, exceptional people and events together. Every day, the people make and remake their city by the ways in which they use the city, <coughs> how people use the city. Travel across it, mark it, construct it, mend it, walk over it, write on it, work on it and under it. There is a certain, f there, there, there is a chance for all of us to enjoy the unexceptional power we each wield every day. The idea behind freedom to experience spatial order is that city is as much created by everyday use, activity, actions of its citizens as it by use in large scale. So why? Violence is a very important category. My next part is that violence in Karachi is a topic to which many writers are contributing through scholarship, journalism, activism, film, and a literary, poetic, music, performing arts, through art festivals and exhibitions and art galleries, museums, cultural events. We see this in a very evidently. Um, for example, communities like Pakistan Shop Community Center, Leari Youth Cafe, or yearly contributions like Aurat March, Climate March, are part of cultural making. But my query here is, where is spatial activism? The reality is darker, and the emphasis on surveillance, gated parks, ticketed experience discourages the social demographic to come forward and be part of government think tanks, to collaborate and construct a participatory narrative where you become part of the conversation with the government. Architects are, are in furious competition to produce iconic buildings for global market. Karachi's local newspaper status is to convert into a smart city. And also we look at how the city has been divided now by calling it the uptown, downtown, and old town. How do you define that? Where is the research where you say the parameters have to be divided? And then we see um, I'm a big uh, Twitter follower of these uh, government officials who tweet at night at 12 o'clock and in the morning they expect a lot of uh, reference and some feedback. So this is a recently a nostalgic photograph the commissioner posted and then the Sindh government says that Karachi will become a smart city. What's the definition of that? We need to question. And there's also another uh, recently um, uh, notion of uh, beautifying Karachi. What does beautification, is that an, uh, you know, uh, feeding in from World Bank or Karachi Initiative projects? This is a great thing, but how does it, is it a top-down or a bottom-up uh, reflection? Because this city does need that kind of intervention. So setting the stage, public and amenity space ownership is vested in the federal, provincial, local government, KDA, LDA, MDA, KMC, KWSB, K Electric, the list can go on. The constitution of, but, but what's interesting, while these, while these institutes are there, um, the, 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 the constitution of the Republic of Pakistan's 1973 fundamental rights of the citizens say that being guaranteed a right to life as it converts all facets, facets of human existence and the most important section in that clause is no amenity plot reserved for the purpose mentioned in clause one shall be converted or utilized for any other purpose. With such strong law, sometimes we get into situation with authority with people who own or control as they think a space uh, as they want, not understanding what the people want or the neighborhoods want. So what, our ca or what we see right now is this, where we get a newsletter which says 300 buildings are declared dangerous. But then you see another news where it says, bring Karachi to its old glory. Now this is a con disconnect conversation. But then what really interesting is what people say, what, what you understand from the graffiti. Pakistan ka matlab kya? Hasina beauty parlor. And then the mosque has a definition by saying, beyond this, you are not allowed to use technology. So it's interesting how people react and act towards the city. I'm going to shift towards um, my presentation. Karachi, a non-exclusive and fractured landscape. Um, this is a very interesting notion where it says, this was the Karachi now, barbed wires, protecting councillors, the pretentious covering themselves with faces of those who are hiding behind the barbed wires. So our city has become somewhat like this right now. And no one is asking you, you're, you're talking about encroachment, you're removing encroachment constantly in a very violent way. But it's always the, the people who are the less, um, you know, they're not, part, they're not the powerful lot. 
but this is where the public space is talked about. And um, we try to soften it by, by putting plants, gardening it up, uh, creating a softer image. But the reality is these long, 120 feet long walls, barren, uh, constantly showing you the fear and the insecurity. These are schools now, educational institutes. Um, parks being totally under surveillance with these chalkies. What, does, what, do, what do they mean to us? And uh, this image is, now, now the design of our architecture has also become incorporating not only the steel wires and the height of the wall has increased, but sandbags have become a very common component with containers. So observing all of this and these um, statements which come on the wall, um, prohibit area, do not enter, trespassers will be shot. This is something which I have been like documenting and trying to understand that why does this need to be so harsh or why does it need to be so violent that we try to stop? So I try to look and document some, one of my favorite artists who did an intervention with such statements. And he went around the city from uh, south to north and he started these uh, interventions on the wall by his graffiti art, which was a very strong statement. And I had to go back um, again and again, going through his notes, going through his books, that what did he really mean? And he was, I think, too ahead in his life, um, where he, now this is a Benazir Bhutto's um, family um, uh, obituary space, where he went and he started these graffitis, kills kings, I mean, this is a cigarette ad. But, it's interesting how he, his intervention and his reflection is so what we always talk about. Um, these are some of the images that I'm going to share with you. This is him himself. This is a container which says police, and then he eradicated the PO and made it into lice, pubic lice. So these, these, these are the, the ideas that really like excite you and, and make you understand and also give you some kind of light that cities can be think in an alternative way. What is that alternative? How activism and architectivism intervenes into urban landscape between order and disorder, a statement that I've borrowed from Lauren Gale's book. Um, these are some other, I'm not going to take too much time, but these are some of the graffiti art that I have been following in the city for some years where, I don't know this, this artist, but he's been going and printing um, in different areas. And, and these are all reflection of how an artist looks at the city. So, so between this, I'm going to talk about my projects that have taken a very, um, uh, it has highlighted a lot of activism through people's project. And I'm a really keen believer that you have to bring people together to understand the design notion. This is um, something that I've shown a lot, but um, I'm going to quickly go through. This is a Pakistan chalk in urban square that through with my um, 15 advisors who helped me uh, develop the design and the programming, the cultural programming of this urban space which through our documentation looked like this. And um, after a basic intervention of $6,000, we converted it into a livable space. Um, the only interesting part of this public space was this uh, large banyan or people tree in the cent in, in off center of this urban square. We rehabilitated and we started doing cultural programming on this. Um, of course, there is a myth story that usually architects design and they leave the space. But here, a few artists of Old Town started coming and doing live painting till I heard, um, a, I read a blog from Karachi Wala. Um, and then I realized that how design makes a difference and intervention makes a difference, which is not curated by you. It, it happens naturally. Um, so sanitization of a design is also something needs to be talked about that once you sanitize, does it, uh, push people out or does it incorporate people in? So this, this naturally happened and of course we took advantage of that and we did Mohalla Bazi with the people around, the, the activists or the, or the young people and we got them together. 
This, uh, the image on far uh, right on the top aisle is uh, the first gallery opening that we did of the artist over there. It's a pop-up uh, first event that took place. And then every Sunday we met. But after this design, what came about were three important projects. One was the Old Town mapping. We started mapping the area, just immediate Old Town, nothing beyond that uh, parameters that we had shortlisted for ourselves. And we started developing um, forms which had an alternative narrative of the historical buildings. These, um, these information, th this information not only had uh, structural documentation, but also what was written, so signages, design, um, and then creating a, a linkage. Where is this information coming from? So social media really helped us. One of my guides um, who helps me uh, take the project forward, she started connecting it and started talking to friends in India. And we started, you know, that kind of linkage, we started creating it. What also helped us is the activism part, where if any building was being broken down, we were being called and told that what's happening inside or um, how the developers are trying to uh, dislodge or dismantle a building. With this came the second project, which is a spoken history project, oral history project, which we call the Ghair Sarkari Tarikh, the non-registered governmental information, where we are taking narrative information from the people living in Old Town. And the third project, between the mapping and the oral history, came out an active project which is, helps us sustain is the Heritage Walk Karachi. It helps us um, take people into an area uh, from an outsider's perspective, but create a narrative which is told by the people. So this is one of, this is the th last project. And um, because of our presence in the area, and this is the building that we recently got on stay, stay, um, on stay. So someone was trying to break this building and it's a beautiful building. You can see that image from inside, how slowly it's been dismantled. But through our activism, we made it um, on a, we, we got it on a hold off. And now they're trying to restore this structure with the help of the antiquity department. So these, these kind of interventions helped us to become an ally with the old town and not looking from an outside perspective and saying, let's gentrify this without creating uh, a narrative between the people who live there and the designers. This is a project of Pursukun Society, which I was part of, um, a project that was a social design restoration, where we not only looked at the building itself, but we also looked into how people are using, we did a whole social analysis that how many times this building and how many times does the train come and stop there and what's the public, um, uh, 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 public traffic which, which inhabits this building. We did a pop-up museum, in, but this is the restoration aspect of it, that how we took forward this project. Uh, in phases, and every three months we had um, an opening and we called people in to come and see the design and give us feedback. Unfortunately, it's on a hold right now, but this building also hosts a small pop-up museum by the Citizens Archive of Pakistan. So it's a very interesting project, and uh, I hope it, it um, opens up again for people to come and be part of it. This is a recent project that I'm part of. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's an ongoing thing. It's an, an ongoing dialogue that I've been having since 2014 when Icon Tower, Bheria Tower in Clifton was being constructed and the first 15 trees were damaged by when they were trying to construct the underpass. I shelved that idea. I think the confidence at that time working with the government was not that much. But recently, we uh, took up this project and we've taken two ro roads where we have documented 68 banyan trees. We declared it the heritage. This is the first time that the heritage has been declared um, as a heritage site uh, in that uh, confined zone. Uh, that's the tweet sent by the Senator Murtaza Wahab after our activism and constantly engaging with people. So today we have started numbering them, we have started pruning maintenance. It's a five point agenda where 68 trees will be conserved and restored. This is the kind of projects I'm involved in and I'm gonna leave on the small note that in my own city of Karachi where I practice as an architect and a planner, I see this in everyday landscape. I call this a kinetic city, a borrowed term from Rahul Malhotra where he calls this a living organism. It's not static, it changes every day on sometimes predictable cycles. Here the temporary is becoming the new permanent. 
Here, urbanism is not about grand vision, it's about grand adjustment. We all have to adjust around what the city is. And we have to touch it lightly, leave a minimal mark, and I think that's an important lesson for all our citizens and architects. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marvi.